Thank you for being here today. Uh, if, you, if you haven't been checking your email or watching your Facebook or the websites, you, you probably got up here a little bit confused as to why we're here at the fellowship hall this morning. Uh, we did have a fire. Um, in Thursday morning, uh, the copier room and the secretary's office uh, burned as a air conditioning unit that malfunctioned and uh, burned those rooms uh, pretty pretty uh, charred black. Uh, but thankfully, the fire was contained in that area. Um, the firemen got here very quick. Uh, someone called it in uh, just after it started, and the firemen got here quick, put it out. So the, the fire was contained in that area, but smoke, as it does, travels throughout the entire building. So smoke and soot went everywhere. So now we get to start this kind of uh, in-depth remediation process where they come and they clean everything, top to bottom. And I, I do mean top to bottom. Um, they, they work super hard to get us this room for this weekend. And, you know, they're in here, they're scrubbing the ceilings down, wiping wiping absolutely everything, taking taking all the books off the shelf, wiping each one individually, put it back. It's, it is a process. So to be able to get the, the sanctuary back up and running, it's going to take a few weeks. Uh, so it's a, it's a long process, but we're, we're going to get there. Um, so for for now, uh, for in the next few weeks at least, we'll be meeting in here, uh, normal services, 9 and 10.30. Uh, we're just going to worship over here, and it, it, it'll be good, right? It'll be good. We'll, we'll get through it. It's a little inconvenient, but we'll get through it. Uh, we got we got a room. We got a bathroom. What more than we need? <laughs> we're good. You're right. And there's coffee in the back. We're perfectly fine. We might never go back in it. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> but thank you so much for, for gathering together. Uh, it means a lot to come together uh, to show up for worship, uh, to show show the Lord that we are here, that we are ready to worship, and uh, I'm I'm excited to worship here together with you this morning. So thank you for being here. Uh, announcements wise, let's see. We got a vacation Bible school meeting that's still going to happen today after this service. So if you're interested in helping out with vacation Bible school, hang around, and uh, we'll get you on the list and, and tell you all about it. Um, let's see. Uh, George is here. He's going to share a few words on behalf of other events that are coming up. Coming up. Oh, well, this is for BBS. We're, yeah. we're well, Valley Lutheran Tri Christ. One of the things is that the people who last year ran in the uh, Lakeport Triathlon are going to still meet. But other people are still invited. What we're having is uh, we're going to be meeting at uh, 9 o'clock. They're going to have a run. And so that means the nine o'clock people church can run with us. But what happens is um, we're going to uh, sort of promote the church in the run um, by uh, wearing our t-shirts and running together. And so that's more fun to run with other Christians. <laughs> I'm talking to boys that are gonna, who are running, but they're going to blow me off. <laughs> I'll be 20 minutes. I'll be 20 minutes behind them. I, I just heard their mileage. Oh, there's no way I'm running. <laughs> what's your, where's that old man? He's back there. Oh, but anyway, <laughs> what? <laughs> but so we're going to be doing that together. Get up, ready, and then uh, we're going to we're going to come to the nine o'clock. People are going to come here in shorts. Is that all right? Come with shorts. My, okay, I'll change in the bathroom again. Can I wear shorts? <laughs> no. I'd like to see that. But anyway, so we're going to meet there, and then we're going to come. The people are running uh, who are really slow are going to be coming in and worshiping with you at 10 30. Uh, so that's going to get our way then we're going to be going and we have to we're going to be have a float in the blossom parade but we have to get ready at 12 o'clock so anybody wants to help participate we're going to be meeting at 12 o'clock uh, right after church and that's what we're going to then get the float ready. We have to be in place by 12 o'clock for uh, the parade, which is at 2 o'clock. Is that right, Kathy? I want to make sure I'm correct on that. So we're going to then promote ourselves, um, the VB Vacation Bible School, at the uh, parade. So we're going to get ourselves noticed in the community, and that's really what we are. We're part of the community. So we want to thank that. And um, So uh, God's blessings. If you want to register, you can go on to Blossom Festival, and you can do it online, or you can go actually go to Fleet Foot, and, and it saves five bucks, and I'm always trying to save money. So you can just do it on paper, and it's even cheaper. It's five dollars off, it's 25 bucks, so, and no service charge. So thank you, and uh, get ready for a, a good time to promote our church in the community. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. <laughs>
All right. And uh, only other announcement that I had this morning is I am feeling a little out of the weather, so I am not going to shake hands and chance for anybody else. Yeah. So I, not to be rude, but I'm not going to shake hands after after service. Uh, but I hope you have a wonderful day. And there are coffee and donuts in the back, so enjoy your fellowship and, and all of that. So uh, blessings on our worship, and let us begin. Play stand. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we rejoice in the season of Easter and the victory of our Lord over sin and death, let us come before God with a humble and contrite heart, confessing our sins and seeking His forgiveness. For mercy of God, we confess that we have sinned against you in God, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have failed to live in the joy of the resurrection, and we have not always proclaimed the good news of Jesus Christ with the boldness. Forgive us and renew us. Hear the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for our sins and rose from the dead, so that we may have eternal life, as a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority. I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, welcome. Good morning. It's good to see all of you in this new space. Thanks for coming on Worship with us again. Uh, please take a moment to turn and greet those around you if you've not already done that. Nice to just stay standing and push it through. You might notice that we are seated a little more closely together and that the acoustics in this room are not great. So, no excuses though for not singing. <laughs> more closely together because everybody sounds bad in this room. Oh, no there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get <some> <laughs> Jesus, so 
Would you please join us next and study my heart? is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. 
Your adversary, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of sufferings are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Too much. 
much of me. <laughs> this is the regularly scheduled reading for the Sunday. And not only that, but I picked this particular text to focus on out of the, the three scripture readings for each weekend, maybe almost a month ago. I had no idea how hard these words would hit today. Yet here we are, living out the lines of this verse, bearing witness to the mystery that leaves the narrative of our lives together with God's word. Scripture always has a way of speaking to our situation and speaking directly to us. And boy, has it spoken loudly this week. If we can take anything from this divine non-coincidence, it's that God is always present, ever knowing, ever speaking, always guiding. Even in the midst of chaos and crisis, his word remains relevant, piercing through the smoke of uncertainty to provide comfort, guidance, and wisdom. As we stand here, we sit here some 25 feet from the, the ashes of Valley's original chancel area, the echoes of 1 Peter 4.12 reverberate, reminding us of a truth we so often forget. Trials and tribulations are not anomalies in our faith. They are central parts of the law. This is, you know, this is where I thought I was originally taking this text today. A reminder that life is full of trials, and that shouldn't be surprising. We live in a sinful world, both surrounded by sin and deep down filled with it. There's no escaping that in this life. That's our reality. And because of that, bad things happen. Offices burn. Loved ones get sick. Relationships crumble. This world, it's not always a wonderful place to live, is it? It reminds me of a, a joke I heard about a shipwrecked man who had spent three years alone on a deserted island. He was overjoyed one day to see a navy ship drop anchor in the bay. A small boat came ashore, and an officer handed the man a newspaper. The captain suggests, the officer said, that you read what's going on in the world and let us know if you still want to be rescued. <laughs> Life can be hard, right? And this world can be scary. But knowing this, we should not be surprised by the fiery trials. Of course, this life, surrounded by sin, is going to be hard. Peter obviously knew this 2,000 years ago, and I don't think it was a new idea at that time. But these words from St. Peter were not meant to, to simply prophesy our current situation. They weren't simply an unhelpful warning that, hey, you know, you're in for it. For what good is prophecy in and of itself? Rather, these words were meant to prepare us all for all of our trials, not just the fire that consumes wood and paint and the good copier and bubbles. <laughs> oh, the bubbles. 2,000 bottles of vacation oh, Bible so school bubbles. <laughs> Although, in all honesty, I'm kind of looking forward to filling out the insurance forms and itemizing 2,000 bottles. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let me correct. Peter's words are to prepare us for these fires that can try our faith, our character, our collective spirit. And I wish I could tell you that this is the last hurdle that we're going to face, but you know, that wouldn't be the truth. Yet what I can tell you with absolute certainty is this. We are not alone in our trials. To be a bit poetic and dramatic about it, right? In the grand tapestry of human existence, the threads of trials, triumphs, joy, and sorrow, they all intertwine, weaving together in a way that is deeply personal and yet universally human. But in every fold, every crease of this rich tapestry, God's presence pervades. He's always there. God's thread runs from the beginning to the end. Always there in the good times and the bad, through the greatest joys and the darkest hours. It is comforting for us then to know that even when our faith, faith seems most tested by our trials, even when we cannot see Him at work, even when we feel most alone, God is still with us. 
we can take refuge in knowing that he will never leave us or forsake us. Deuteronomy 31. And so even when everything else seems uncertain, we can have hope that God's unfailing love never changes. Hebrews 13. So let us then lean into him as we move forward through these fires, whatever they may be. For he gives strength to those who wait upon him. And waiting upon him, in those words of Isaiah 40, 31, is exactly what we should do. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I love that verse because there's something so relieving and powerful in the idea that all this hinges upon us waiting for the Lord. I mean, it's such a passive thing. It takes the burden off of our shoulders and puts it in God's strong hands. I like how we translate this Hebrew word as waiting. Because it really gets across the point that it all depends upon God and not on us. But that word means more than just to sit around and wait. It can also be translated as hope. To look to the Lord for, with, with our expectations that, that we trust in His actions and not in our own. Not trying to do it ourselves, but waiting for Him. We are waiting in faith. Hoping and trusting the Lord. And isn't that what we need today? A strong God to rely upon? Someone bigger, stronger, smarter than ourselves to ask the big questions to? In the face of adversity, our initial instinct is often the question, why me? Why now? That's understandable, it's human. We are innately inclined to seek comfort, security, and stability. And so when a storm of trials rages and shakes the boat, so to speak, it's easy to feel lost, abandoned even. But remember the wisdom of 1 Peter 4.12. Trials are not strange occurrences, but part of our journey. Trials are not the absence of God, but rather they are where we can most clearly see the manifestation of his presence. And forgive me, but you know, pastorally and personally, even I really liked writing that line, so I kind of want to preach it again. <laughs> Trials are not the absence of God, but rather they are where we can see most clearly the manifestation of His presence. It's a sad reality of human nature that we often don't turn to God, right, or go looking for God until things get bad. Or at the very least, our relationships, they always seem to get better with God in adversity. Which is good, right? But why do we always wait so long? Why do we wait for problems before searching for the solutions? It's in the fiery furnace of our trials that our faith is refined, our character is tested, and our spirit is strengthened. And that's a good thing, right? We should rejoice in that. We should look for those opportunities. The fire does not consume us, it refines us. Our trials offer us a chance to draw closer to God, to experience His presence in a deeper, more meaningful way, and to understand more clearly the depth of His love for us. Our setbacks also provide us with a chance to come together, to unite as a community, to support and uplift one another in love and empathy. I look around this gathering today and what I see is a testament to the power of unity, of shared faith and resilience. A congregation that isn't afraid of some soot-covered pews, a few plastic sheets, and some torn-up carpet. A congregation that doesn't mind trading a, a wooden pew for a, okay, equally hard wooden pew. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. A congregation that is next week excited to go back to those little disposable communion cups again. <laughs> right? On the 9 o'clock service, they loved it. Okay, no, no, that's not too far, right? I know, I know. But we'll deal with it for a few weeks. A congregation that showed up 
three days after the fire, not knowing what to expect, really, but here to worship. And that is good. That is blessed. That is unity. That tells me that we will have no problem navigating this trial, this inconvenience, whether this remediation takes three weeks, three months, three years. Okay, again, too far. <laughs> it's not going to take three years. Okay. We are not pleading by committee. We'll take that off. I know you're right. I love the fellowship hall. But don't want to be in here forever. Now, I can't promise that the road ahead is going to be quick and easy. And that goes for the fire here. And it goes for the trials in your own life. But I can promise that God will be with us every step of the way. We will rebuild not just our physical space, but also our spiritual resilience, our, our fellowship, our faith in God's divine providence. As we continue our journey, may we always remember the words of 1 Peter, that the flame of trial does not consume, but refines. And the ashes of adversity are always the most fertile ground for new growth. In the face of trials, with Christ, we are not just survivors, we are victors. For everything we suffer, when suffered with Christ, we turn into victory. This, this is our victory. Rejoice, for in this difficulty, we will clearly see God's presence. Amen. 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 And know that the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let us stand as the offerings are brought forward to you. full of gratitude, thanking you for the countless blessings you have bestowed upon us. As we present our offerings to you, we ask for your guidance in times of trials and hardships. Grant us the wisdom to embrace suffering as a means of refining our faith, and the courage to remain steadfast in our devotion to you. Help us to humble ourselves under your mighty hand, trusting that you will exalt us in due time. With thankful hearts, we commit these gifts to your service as a testimony of our love and devotion. Amen. Let us now confess together our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God, in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, ruler of all, protect and defend your church from every attack of the devil who prowls and seeks to devour. Where he tempts, strengthen your people to resist his seductions and terrors. Where he gains a foothold with false teachings or ungodly living, call to repentance and holiness. And where he incites enemies against your word and church, preserve your saints in the faith that they may rejoice to share in the sufferings of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, bless the recovery and remediation here at Valley. Bring forth your harvest from the seeds that are sown in this space. 
Support the, those who endure fiery trials for your name. Let us rejoice in that tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, and sword, as we share in your suffering and victory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you hold the might of man in your hand and can destroy all things by your mighty power. Bless our nation and the peoples of the world. Where war and violence threaten, bring peace and justice. Where oppression reigns, bring liberty. Watch over those who defend us, especially the men and women of our armed forces, and those who protect within our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have saved us by your grace. We pray for the sick, the distressed, those whose hearts are heavy, those whose lives are burdened, those who mourn, and all who are in need. Especially today, we lift up to you Beth, Annie, Eileen, Jim, Donna, Robert, Phyllis, Evie, Kathy, John, Jeanette, Bob, Darlene, Suzanne, Marilyn, Ken, and Susan. Grant them healing according to your will, strength, and mercy according to their needs, and the peace that passes understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as the first Christians devoted themselves to prayer and worship following Christ's glorious ascension, preserve us in the, state, in the same until we are raised with all the saints to your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us now pray together as our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive our trespasses. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, and the power, and the glory, 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 and and glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Thank you. 